Well, hello everybody, good morning. So I'm very pleased to see you today. Now it's slightly different because actually this is not Saturday morning for me, this is Thursday morning for me, but I so wanted to um, carry on with my Saturday mornings that I have pre-recorded this and I particularly wanted to do this one because, because um, a, uh, Ginger has passed through my life and when Ginger passes through my life, then memories come up, and I'm going to talk about that later. But look, I've got the kettle boiling, and um, and I'm just going to make myself some really simple ginger tea, which is a really, really lovely tea and refreshing. Now, in an ideal world, and when my daughter Josie wasn't feeling great last week, what I did actually with the ginger root is that I actually just popped it in a saucepan and um, with water and brought it to the boil and simmered it for... for well, it was 30 minutes, but anything over 15 minutes is good with these roots. And then all the medicinal qualities come out and you end up with this wonderful kind of mellow, well, feisty if you put too much ginger in, but this amazing warming medicinal drink. And it's very, very therapeutic. I it's very, very good for you. So if you want to really get the most out of your ginger, I think I've got enough for two cups here, then do that. Or just really simply, just, it's lovely too, relaxing, just to, Pop some fresh ginger in a, in a in a mug with some boiling water, and that's that's really lovely. So um, let me let me explain myself today. So I've got three recipes and, and, and things, but um, ginger passed my mind, which means that Auntie Joyce passes my mind now. And then I also came across. I was rummaging trying to find my driving license or something the other day, and I came across this gorgeous little card in my wallet which I carry around everywhere and it just says dearest B keep buzzing very much love AJ Auntie Joyce now Auntie Joyce um, died many years ago she died from cancer so that is what today is all about it's about cancer and um, I have the, I have a particular a particular interest in keeping up with as much as I can from my nutritional therapist point of view to find out the latest research and what they're saying about what to eat and what help there is. I am I am passionate to pass on to anybody, and I, I blame Auntie Joyce for this. Auntie Joyce, who died from cancer, um, um, and her funeral was the night before my my eldest son Rory was born. Um, she was a very very wise lady, and she um, she would, had time for us all. She didn't have kids, um, and her husband had died early, and she had time to listen. And she, as I say, she was very wise. So. This is for her, and I just want to start, so this will be just the start of passing on knowledge and information, information for you to have and spread the word. So I think the first thing is, um, I don't have cancer, I have not had cancer, so, and cancer is obviously a very terrifying thing. So this just comes with my heart and the desire to pass information on so that you can use it in whichever way feels right for you. So there we go, that said. Now, um, I um, had um, a consultation with a friend who is sadly, um, sadly passed away now, um, but with an amazing lady called Carol Granger, Dr. Carol Granger. She is absolutely phenomenal. She coaches, um, um, coaches nutrition therapists how to support their clients with cancer. She has a phenomenally high level um, uh, medical background and, um, and she's very personable. So I have the notes of this consultation from a couple of years ago just to make sure that I wasn't, you know, um, staying on track. And also I went last J June last year to a conference in London all day and heard from several amazing people. So at the end of today, there will be some show notes with links for you to use as you see fit. But we're gonna bring it back to Ginger. Ginger was something that Aunt Joyce said to me she found palatable when she was um, unwell. And so, um, so uh, great. So let's make some ginger biscuits, shall we? So what I've got here is 200 grams of, of 200, a bag of 200. What we want is 250 grams of ground nuts and seeds. So you can use ground almonds. Sorry for me getting overexcited there, but I only had a bag of 200 grams. So what I've also got is some ground linseeds. 
no, not ground leaf, ground sunflower seeds. I weighed out another 50 grams and I plonked them into the grinder. So, you know, you can do a mixture there. You can mix it with all, if you, you know, you may have um, a, nut, a nut allergy. So you can, you know, use all sunflower seeds if needs be. And they're a really useful tool and I use them for making pastry. Now, the other thing about Lin's, um, sunflower seeds, well, of course, and linseeds as well, is their omega-3s. And this is, this is something that is very important um, when you are trying to support cancer. So I think, I think what I'm coming from today, yes, we're making something lovely and gingery, and it, this may be something, a nice treat you can make for yourself or somebody you know who has cancer, um, and know that it's likely that it will be a, a lovely thing for them to have because ginger is palatable for them. Um, as well as its medicinal qualities. Right, okay, so we've got the ground arms in there because this is an all about food um, little half hour. And I stupidly didn't look at the clock before I started because half an hour is going to be. Now, ginger. So we're going to use a lot of ginger. We're going to use three tablespoons of ginger. So I get through a lot of ginger in this house and I make sure that I always have a good couple of jars waiting. Oh, I'm just bad. Got, it's got a bit stuck at the bottom there. Yes, I always have good, a good couple of jars waiting in the sidelines just in case, um, because heaven forbid. Now with ginger, you know, it is feisty and strong. Woo! And I've even made it feistier and stronger. Right, there we go. Now, also in this recipe, we're going to have a teaspoon of bicarb of soda. So, Let's get that on in there. And then we're going to have, what is really nice actually with this is the zest of a lemon. Now, um, you know, organic is going to be really, really important for you, um, if at all possible, um, with cancer. So, what we need to consider is that actually cancer is, is everywhere at the moment. So really what I want to do is, in, embolden you, enliven you to actually be prepared that your body might get cancer. So what can we do to prevent, prevent it getting it? Prevention is going to always be better than cure, okay? So um, <clears throat> when you have cancer, you definitely need all the medical treatment that, uh, that is offered. You need um, chemo you need all these incredible things and it isn't it absolutely incredible what is on offer and um you need it to to kill the cancer to get better but what we also need to do is make sure that our body if we have cancer can actually support the treatment and that's why the nutrition is so important because if your body can't support the treatment then you can't have the treatment and you can't get better so it is really important, this nutrition side. But also, if we eat in a way that supports a, a, a patient with cancer, actually, why don't we do that all the time and make sure that we don't get to that place in the first place? So, I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there all today. Right, we've got all those ingredients in. Last ingredient I like to put in it is a little bit of um, coconut oil. I'm using the unflavored one. I'm using four tablespoons, two, Three, four, there we go. So this actually is a super easy recipe. I'm doing it in the food processor, but do you know what? You can mix it in a bowl, can you? So here we go. Oops. Right, better get a spat in there. And um, we just need a little bit more of the coconut oil. So that just blends together. That's what I use it for. Now I'm just going to feel that that is coming together. Nearly. I'm just going to add a little bit more oil in there. There we go. Job done. So I'll take 
je les. Oh, I can smell like ginger coming. I can smell like ginger coming. Now, here we go. Let's just look at that. It's actually quite wet. I probably didn't need to get so excited over the over the ginger. What I'm just doing is bring it over the oil, I should say, but I'm bringing it together and then I'm just going to use my scoop and scoop it onto the tray. So, here we go. Right. I have a feeling I'm going to be going on. So, let's see. Let's just scoop that onto the tray. There we go. Or you could use a teaspoon. And then, you know, I think I won't bore you with this. I'll do this when it's over. Then we'll just use a palm of hand to just press that down. And we're just going to have these really lovely homemade cookies. So, ginger cookies. There we go. There we go. Oh, I'm going to taste a little bit of that. Mm. Yum. Yum, yum, yum. Right. Okay, now, next one up. Next one up. Green, 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 green. So, I've been looking out my kitchen window and I've been seeing the green, um, the green kale growing, the green cavolo nero growing, and it's been winking at me. In fact, I took a slug off it a bit earlier on. And the parsley started to grow, which is really great. And I just thought, we need green. You know we need green in our life, but we also need prebiotic fibre to keep the system clear. So this is something that um, came up actually with Dr Mindy Peltz when I was listening, because you, well, if you've been listening to me, you will know that um, I love what she's doing. And she, she talks all about fasting. But what she talks actually is about puffy puffiness underneath your arm if you're puffy underneath your arm that's an indication that your lymph nodes are blocked and you're not getting clearance so what we need to be sure is that our body clears itself of toxins which means our liver needs to be working really well but also our bowels need to be working really well you know so there is a great um saying which i have heard in the medical world that you know let's talk let's talk poos here you know, um, you can pass emotion um, and it's normal either once a day or once every six days. All of this is in within the normal range. Well, I would say, yes, this is in within all the normal range because the normal person, given the statistics we're given, is, isn't eating enough fibre. Therefore, they are not passing um, waste food out of their body with the regularity they should. It makes sense to me that we have a bowel movement at least once a day to know that our body is moving through through. And I have to say, I've been in times in my life when this has not happened and it has caused so much distress. It makes me emotionally distressed. It makes me, I had no idea what was going. I felt I was going mad. This is, thank goodness, many years ago now. But um, I had spots on my chin, all sorts of things. You know, if you've got things going on, you just spots on your face. It's, just let's let's start with digestion and make sure the toxins are coming through toxins have got to come out somewhere so that's the first thing are you moving moving <laughs> um once a day at least um not at least at least once a day properly so um let's over and out on that one right so let's come back to um making a delicious pesto Okay, we're making a kale pesto. I used to love using cavolo neros in these wonderful Italian soups with cannellini beans and things like that, but I don't eat cannellini beans these days. But look, this is very exciting. I've just found two more slugs on my um, on my tray here. So this literally has come straight from my garden. So I think what we'll do is just do a bit of rinsing because um, I don't want slugs in the pesto. Oh, I've got machines coming out of my woodwork here. Right. Oh, have I unplugged the wrong one? Unplugged the wrong one. Here we go. 
Now, so you could do it in a food processor, but I've got my powerful blender, so it's always nice to use that. So pesto, typically made with basil. Now kale is, um, but but it can be made with other things, and I, 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 all sorts of things, all oh, green leaves. Um, so I'm gonna mix you here today. I've got parsley from the garden. I've also got bio flat leaf parsley. And I thought I had some coriander from my church event that I was involved with last night. But um, you do need a blender. And as I think, it, this is another great staple to have. I'm all about staples to have in your freezer or fridge that just mean that without having to think about it, you are eating the things that are good for you. I think we've all heard of the blue zones now and the longevity of the people, the health of the people that live there. But what they also say is that they don't have to think about these things. It's just, they have purple potatoes growing. They have the climate. They have, you know, it's either hilly, so they have to climb up and down. Do you know what I mean? It, 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 the only food that's available is food that's good for you. Whereas we have a different thing. So we need to make it, um, and I try and make it, so that um, eating the good stuff is really easy for me because I need things to be easy. So I'm going to shove the parsley in there as well. And this extra parsley, this extra flat leaf parsley, I'm off the pan for some demonstration. So a lot of green is going in there. Yippee! Now, um, cheese. I'm not going to put in dairy cheese because that is inflammatory. And when we come back to cancer, we don't want to create any more inflammation in our body. So it's a really sensible idea to take dairy um, per se out. Having said that, we're going to have a little bit of chat. I am going to use nutritional yeast, yum, as the cheesy element. So a really good wodge in there. Then nuts, of course, we can use pine kernels. Uh, I haven't got any of those, but why not really up the ante? And let's use walnuts. Walnuts are delicious. Again, full of these wonderful, wonderful oils that are so good for you. And of course, it's, it's more diversity, isn't it? So diversity is going to be amazing for us. So, you know me, I don't really measure and weigh these days. It goes by feel. Now, garlic, of course, is a great thing. So we're going to add a couple of cloves of that. And I can see all the garlic is starting to um, shoot at this time of year. Right, garlic in there. Now, I sometimes find that these some more, um, these pestos made with bitter leaves sometimes need um, a little bit of lemon juice. So I'm gonna have a lemon at the ready. What else have I got? Walnuts, ah, it'll be the olive oil. So you want your best quality olive oil. So pure, unfiltered, cold pressed, organic, with any luck, olive oil and a really, really decent amount. This was given to me by my son for Christmas, so it's very lovely. I'm going to use some pink Himalayan salt, a little bit of salt goes in there, and of course, lots of lovely black pepper. Ooh, I might run out of this. I bought myself some new peppercorns yesterday. So lots and lots of black pepper. Now this pesto, of course, is going to be amazing, but to go with roast vegetables, or to go with go with a dollop in your soup, which I think is a great thing, or you spread it on your lovely um, um, bread, on your nice nut and seed bread. So none of the white stuff, please. Okay, right, here we go. Now, so let's turn this on. Now I'm gonna use my plunger. <laughs> Right, so pesto, that just did its 
own thing. In that, it would have been absolutely fine in the in the food process. So it just it just takes longer. That's all. Right. So tasting is so. Oh, enough. Enough, Ivy. So these bitter leaves are so good for you, for your liver. It's the fiber. It's your digestion. Gets digestive. I can feel my mouth watering already. Amazing. What I want, I do want more black pepper in there. And I do want a little bit more salt. And yeah, I am going to put in some lemon juice because I think that would be lovely. Mm. So again, green leaves, iceberg doesn't cut it. You know, you need the watercresses, the um, uh, watercress, what else? Come on, it's not difficult. Watercress, chicory is a brilliant one. Um, Rocket's another brilliant one, you know, those kind of things. And this kale is also very good. So, let's just do one more. Right, okay, so I'm feeling good, you know. So I've got, we've got ginger biscuits and we've got some lovely green kale. Oh dear, double dipping. Mm. That is great. Okay, so we've used the nutritional yeast and walnuts, which are just gorgeous. Okay, right, I'm feeling good about it. So let's pop that there. I'll take photos of that later on. Yum, yum, yum. And then I've got, you remember, if you've watched before, the lovely nut and seed loaf. So this would be amazing. You just toast that, put a great dollop, and I mean a great dollop on it, and have it on with the side of some soup. That would be really, really lovely. Now your soup, of course, will be mushroom soup because, again, that is very, very good for you from a <clears throat> medical point of view for your immune system. Now, the last little thing I thought would be good was just, again, we can just add a little bit about the fibre and a um, couple of things here. Linseeds in particular. Now, this is a really easy little trick. Um, for um, just to have on the go all the time. So, now yesterday we had a lovely, we have a new rector at church and so I had helped with some catering for that and that was lovely and I took my mum by the side and when her carer dropped her off, she sort of said to me inside, your mother's constipated but I've just given her a pill and I was like, oh, give her a pill, oh. And then I thought, oh my goodness, we're off to church. <laughs> all is well. But I just thought, you know, these are some such simple tools to just, you know, being constipated was such an awful and long part of my life around the time I was having babies and, and young children. And I had no idea how to sort it out. I had no idea how bad it was. And, and um, so look, this is, this is easy, guys. This is, this is easy. Um, what you're just going to do, you just can have it on the go and it lasts for several days is get a little pot, I'll do it in a slightly pot. And, you know, this is breakfast. You're gonna get some yogurt, a nice natural yogurt. Now, an ideal world of kefir, okay? Because that's super powerful with um, probiotics, okay? So um, that's a really lovely thing. So you get a couple of spoons. In fact, you know, I, I don't need to do it. I could have just shuck the linseed, linseeds in there. So you can use linseeds or chia seeds, and then you just pop some in, you know, a good couple of tablespoons, and give that a stir, you know, and Bob's your uncle. Oh, it's quite a lot, but that will definitely last a couple of days. And what happens is that the linseeds um, absorb the yogurt, the moisture in the yogurt, and they just plump up, okay? And then they become super digestible. And it's like eating a kind of pudding. And you can have this with a lovely apple compote, so cooked apples, apples cooked with cinnamon. I've got those in the freezer from when we had lots on the tree last autumn. Um, but this, this simple thing could be a real grab and go breakfast for you. And again, the fiber, the omega-3s, which are so important, sorted. You are absolutely sorted. But you need to leave it in the fridge overnight and then give it a good stir. Your uncle. If you want to flavour it up with a bit of vanilla or better still, some ground cinnamon, that's a really, really good 
but Branson is so marvellous. Um, you know, I'm going on about it all the time. Let's put it... Oh! I seem to be being generous with my hands this morning. That'll be the late night with the church event. We have a wonderful new lecture, which is lovely. So sad to see our last one go because she was amazing and wonderful to see a new one arrive. So that's that. Now, last other last tiny little thing, because then I am definitely going, is, you know, sardines. So oily fish will be a brilliant, brilliant main source of protein for you. So yes, salmon. That they, we call them the um, smashers: salmon, mackerel, anchovies, herring, and <laughs> salmon, mackerel, anchovies, herring, and uh -huh. I've forgotten. <laughs> I forgot. I can't. Think. Anyway, I um, I keep saying, saying halibut, but anyway, um, sardines is what I'm holding in my hand. So have tins of sardines in the larder, and I don't love um, absolutely love sardines, but. I do really like them, and I, what I'm going to do is, I've got some red onion to chop up, I've got some olives left over from the church of Ed last night, and actually I've got, so I'm going to open the tin and mix that up, and this actually is a really lovely red pepper dip, which is grilled red peppers, and walnuts, and olive oil, and lemon, and cayenne, and, and so on, so I'm probably going to mix it in with a bit of that, but just opening a can of, you know, you can have it with, this is your fast food, guys, this is your lunchbox, this is, just really practical um, food. My mum used to do it when I was little and I used to look at her strangely, but it's fine and it's great and it's so good for you. So, and you can get them with lovely flavours now. So I think that's it. So just to say, Auntie Joyce, I'm, I am buzzing and I will carry on. Um, I will put an information sheet of links of places that you can go to, to, to look up and see what's available and know who's there to help. Um, I strongly promote... Um, getting um, some nutritional support if you're going through a cancer process or if you've had it and want to know how to um, support your body best going forward that's good the, the big question that never seems to get asked is why did you get it in the first place if we can answer that question it will be fantastic so anyway let's do the best we can do with what we've got i should be back with more more things that i've learned there is a lot more to pass on to you but i hope you've enjoyed that have a great saturday and i will see you next week okay bye